What is holoportation? And how is it different from augmented reality and mixed reality and whatever Microsoft mesh is? Well, let's go through it. Holoportation is something that just blows people away when they see it's no longer science fiction. But to explain it, we need a brief background on VR, AR, and MR, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. We'll run through it really fast. We think everybody understands VR by now, so let's make this short by simply saying that virtual reality is just an immersive viewing experience of a digital world that you can move through. So you can turn your head left and see what's on the left. Super cool, but not new. What's augmented reality? Well, augmented reality is pretty cool. Augmented reality is the overlaying of digital objects, you know, animals, products, maps, information bubbles, people, whatever, in your real world. So here's some examples of AR, in case you don't get it. If you're walking down the street and your glasses are overlaying the names of the stores and the times that they're open, and maybe the menus of the restaurants that are in your line of sight, that's AR. If you're in your living room and you're on your mobile phone, which has its camera turned on so you can sort of see through the phone, and you see a cute little character like Pikachu sitting in a chair, you know he's not really there, but you see him, that's augmented reality. If you're driving your car and a tiny projector in the dashboard is showing a map uh, or the driving directions of where you need to go right on the windshield in front of you, you know, a heads up display, that's augmented reality. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. And what's mixed reality? Well, mixed reality is just the next thing. It's simply augmented reality that you can interact with. So let's again take some quick examples. Perhaps you're training to repair jet engines. They are expensive. So an airline that owns those engines probably doesn't want a new mechanic starting to pull wires and disconnecting fluid lines on a real engine, just hoping you can put it back together. Emirates Airlines, as an example, has their mechanics train and certify on digital jet engines. The student mechanics can open the little doors, pull wires, unbolt screws, add things in, all on an engine that doesn't exist. But the mechanic can both see and interact with it using Microsoft HoloLens glasses. That's mixed reality. What if you could interact with a movie you were watching where the main character is walking ahead of you and you decide that you want to look to see what's in that closet? So you turn your head, reach your hand out, grab the handle and pull it open. Remember, this is a movie and that door is not in the middle of your living room. You're still sitting on your couch, but you can see that door and door handle and you can interact with it. That is mixed reality. Okay, so I think we've got those terms down. Microsoft Mesh, that's new. Microsoft Mesh is just a new infrastructure that allows developers to make mixed reality work on most platforms with more than just one person. So I know there's a bunch of jargon in there, so let's break that down. It's not as complex as you think. Using Microsoft Mesh, you could not only interact with digital things, just like mixed reality, but others in the same room at the same time could use their mobile phone or a tablet or a PC, or Google Glasses, or HTC Vive headset, or HoloLens, or whatever else, has a camera on one side of it so you can see what's in front of that screen, and a screen that lets the computer overlay digital things so that you can interact with it. So enough of that, let's give you some examples. If you are in a Zoom meeting, right, a Teams meeting, Skype, using your cell phone or your tablet, and you can see the prototype of a new car that isn't in front of you, but it sure looks like it because you can see it on the screen. And you can walk around it holding your phone, right? So it's got the positioning down and you can open the doors and you can pinch and zoom on it to, to move in and out. And in the same meeting is someone else wearing, let's uh, use a different thing. Let's say HoloLens or, well, what Google Glasses will become in the future. 
So different technology, but they see you and they see you opening that door and they see you walking around and they're on the other side of the car and you can see them. That is what Microsoft Mesh makes possible. If you're walking down the street and you hold up your phone so the camera can see the buildings uh, in front of you in the street and the screen also displays the menu of the restaurants that are around you and you can flip through that. Well, wouldn't it be cool if you could make a call to the restaurant once you find what you're looking for and instead of just getting a voice on the phone, you could see a representation of the maitre d' or whoever else it might be, you know, the person taking your order and they could see a digital representation of you and you could interact. That is what Microsoft Mesh makes possible. If you're wearing digital glasses, Google Glass, Microsoft HoloLens, whatever, you guys know the list, and someone's way across the room from you, wouldn't it be great if you could just touch them to start a video call? But what if they're in a hurry and they have to go back to their room for some reason, say you're in an apartment building, they have to go three floors up and across the hall. Well, with Microsoft Mesh, it would be more than possible for the two of you to continue to see avatars of each other and interact. You could also then bring in other people into the meeting. And maybe one of them was using a cell phone and maybe one of them was using a tablet and somebody else was using a HoloLens. That's what Microsoft Mesh makes possible. So that's all the background you need to understand holoportation. So let's get into what is holoportation. The year 2020 was a mess for schools and families and businesses. But one of the things that made it so much more bearable were video meetings. In the end, society was pushed forward about five years as far as the technology goes. And we realized that face-to-face -face meetings are not as critical to success as we thought. However, I think everyone can agree that a Zoom meeting is never going to be as impactful as a physical encounter. What if there was something between a video chat and a physical meeting? That is what Microsoft has invented. Take a look at this old Microsoft research demonstration video from 2016. So do you remember how Star Trek was able to beam people from one place to another? Well, that isn't gonna happen anytime soon. What is real and what you are going to have available to you in the coming months, perhaps a year or so, is holoportation enabled by Microsoft Mesh. Holoportation puts a digital avatar of you with your photo on your face and with eyes that blink and your mouth that moves to the words that you're saying in a space with others that you can fully interact with. There are no products based on Microsoft Mesh that are commercially available in March of 2021, but we expect there'll be lots in the not so foggy future, running off of Teams, through the Xbox, things like that. And it's clearly going to be licensed and operable with other companies' headsets and with apps that you just install on your phone or your PC or your tablet. Here is the lead developer of Microsoft Mesh to explain how this came about and where it's all going. Now, Microsoft has taken a big step forward. The company is unveiling Mesh, a new mixed reality platform that allows users to work and play together virtually from any location by interacting with the same set of holograms on different devices. Technical fellow Alex Kitman led the reveal as an avatar, and he joins us now. Microsoft Mesh evolves that, that story by really being a new collaborative platform. It builds natively on top of, of Azure, and it gives the developers the freedom to create mesh-enabled experiences that really do three things. The first thing, it allows you know, us to experience mixed reality together, much like we did on the show today. Imagine having shared holograms between each of us where I can pass you a hologram, we can manipulate holograms together and really be in the same space where the holograms are shared between all of us. Now, the second thing Microsoft Mesh does is it gives us agency in mixed reality. It allows us to um, represent ourselves from avatars all the way to holoportation so that we can experience mixed reality together in a social way, even when we're not in the same physical location. And then lastly, as Anu talked about, Microsoft and Mesh allows us to connect from anywhere and really any device, be it augmented reality with devices like HoloLens, all the way to virtual reality devices like Oculus or Windows virtual reality headsets, and even you know 2D devices like PCs or mobile phones. So do you think this is really going to change the future of the workplace or is this something, you know, more fun that's going to transform gaming and more consumer applications? 50% of Fortune 500 companies by now have purchased a HoloLens too. So I do think that it's transformative in enterprise today, but mixed reality as a medium will be transformative for every everything and everyone in the future. Think about something that should be super visceral to each of us. 
right? This hybrid work environment that I think all of us are living in today, where in a sense here can be anywhere. And you know, most companies don't have a single physical location for a headquarters right now. I'm most excited about being able to, you know, have collaborative computing experiences with my team from across the world where we can feel socially present without actually being there. I'm excited about being able to hang out with my family in Brazil and play something as simple as a board game where, again, I feel socially present without actually being physically there with them. You know, of course, I'm biased and I prefer, you know, head-mounted displays, things that you wear on your head to be able to visualize all of this beautiful mixed reality landscape. But a lot of it, in my mind, is particularly moving to collaboration, is how do you bring in everybody and leave essentially nobody behind that's inclusive of the people with 2D devices. To your question around, you know, when for someone like you, I do think that, uh, you know, ultimately you need to think about these devices as really needing to come up with three things. These devices need to be very immersive. They need to be very comfortable. They need to have enough value for the task at hand. You know, for consumers and more consumer level spaces, I do think we're hitting the right marker in terms of immersion. I think we're not quite there yet in terms of comfort. You know, I'm very proud to be the leader in mixed reality in the world with devices like HoloLens, and, uh, but they're still in a sense right. goggles, right? And until they become glasses and socially acceptable glasses, I think uh, we're not going to get to call it, you know, a mainstream space for mixed reality. I ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10, the Windows Server, we spend a lot of time at Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks, like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with Google algorithm. Thanks for your help.